Hello, I'm your host, Stacy Nelson, and welcome to another edition of Everyday Northwest. On today's show, we'll feature a sculptor who makes amazing figures from clay to bronze, an outstanding Idaho winery that also serves gourmet farm to table foods, and a painter who will exercise not only your mind, but also your funny bone. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we explore the sights, sounds, eats, beats, treats, and flavors that make Everyday Northwest. Art has a special place in everybody's heart. It's, it's an amazing uh, level or, of interest and excitement. With a skill and passion rarely seen and always celebrated, Cheryl Metcalf creates works with her hands that range from impressionist to realism. I recently participated in an Out West art show in Great Falls, Montana. It was the first time that I had attended that event. It was wonderful. There were quite a few people um, quite a large number of people attending the art show, and it was successful for me. I sold quite a few pieces. Cheryl's so friendly and so outgoing and so good with, uh, with people and customers. So it was a natural fit for her. And I think uh, you'll see when you, when you see her in action, you see that she's very welcoming to people and very, she loves to sculpt in front of people. She's very fast and people get to see it happen really quickly. It's great living in the Northwest. There's lots of shows. I have probably about six to seven this year and I'm hoping to add a little bit add a couple more to my calendar. I've been blessed to develop several art collectors. They are my bread and butter sometimes, especially in the winter, and it's just been wonderful. They are in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, and I have a couple in another state. My next event is in Whitefish, Montana at the Underscore Gallery, and I'll be doing a demo on their Art Walk Night, which is a Thursday, June the 2nd, and we always have a good time. I'll be sculpting a bear from scratch, and um, we'll usually take a pre-order from it, and it's a lot of fun. Art has a special place in everybody's heart. It's, it's an amazing uh, level or, of interest and excitement, and Cheryl gets it. She gets that excitement, she gets that thrill. And uh, so it's only gonna take off, it's only gonna get better. She's, she's, uh, she's gonna have opportunities to do larger than life uh, stuff it's, uh, in the future. I think it's just a matter of time. Cheryl enjoys creating her works in the Rockford Building in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The Rockford Building has a vibrant artist community and is open to public viewing of the artist's studios. My very first sculpture, I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but this is pretty close to what it might have been. And this one's pretty dirty, I just pulled it out of the archives. At home I have what I call the graveyard of sculptures. And um, she's lost her head, because sometimes it gets warm and pieces fall apart if you don't get them molded and off to the foundry, they're subject to a lot of damage. 
So this one is in wax and it was probably an early piece that I did. My style in sculpture might be um, on the verge of impressionism. I was always drawn to faces and um, the, the human form was probably the most alluring to me. When I produce a bronze, I try to keep the addition size not any higher than 50. Um, 35 to 50, I've done some lower numbers, but they sell out quick. My pieces go, can be pretty small. This is just a little bear, I call him five o'clock. So what do you do at five o'clock? Well, for me, maybe it's have a beer and, well, maybe not. This sculpture, his name is We Saw, and he's an actual uh, Shoshone tribe member. Um, Rose Hopkins, Rosen Hopkins um, did a series on Native Americans in 1899, and this was one of the photographs from that collection. So he is incomplete. I'm still working on him. He'll have more of a blanket. I'd like to put an animal um, tucked in under here. I haven't decided what that would be yet. Um, he's got a couple feathers that'll come out here. He's one on the side of his face. Um, I'll have to detail beads. He's got a real loose, he's, his hair's real loose in the photo to about here and then it kind of comes down to a braid and this one's actually kind of knotted up. So he has a lot more detail. I think he's gonna be a really interesting piece. I like him quite a bit. Sizes um, of my sculptures range from larger than life, which would be Chief Morris Antelope. I earned the opportunity to sculpt Chief Morris Antelope. It was a contest. It was a call to artists for Coeur d'Alene Tribe. They were looking for something that represented the Coeur d'Alene Tribe to go down along the river near NIC. And I sculpted um, Chief Morris Antelope. He was, I put him in a, a kneeling position and he's holding a flag. And if he were standing, he'd be 10 foot tall. So when I stand up next to him on the sculpture, I think my head doesn't quite come to the top of his head. So he's got some height. Um, I've had a private commission for a, a black bear. That was a lot of fun to do something for a 10 year anniversary. And that's um, a, a really, just a really nice piece. Uh, I have another piece that I'll be starting just in probably another month of a Coeur d'Alene tribe mom. And she's got a, holding a, a baby in a cradle board in her lap. This piece is gonna be life-sized. She'll be out in front of the Human Rights Education Institute building, a nice brick building just right downtown. And I'm excited about getting her started. The Coeur d'Alene City Council has just approved that um, she is good to go. We're gonna be looking for grant money. Um, gonna approach the tribe and see if they're interested in helping out and kind of go from there. After a long day of work, our Everyday Northwest crew knows just where to go to enjoy great food and refreshments. Join us as our art chowder writer and owner of thecorkjockey.com, Eric Cook, interviews Chris and Maria Tiffany, winemakers and restaurateurs of the Cranberry Road Winery. It's really nice to be here with you today. We're in Coeur d'Alene and you have a business here that's kind of unique. You have a winery and a restaurant. What, how long have you been operating this restaurant? And and how's it going? So this is our 13th year. Oh um, this is our first, uh, finishing our first year here in Coeur d'Alene. 
Uh, we started in Westport, Washington, okay. uh, originally back in 2009. Um, that was friends and I started in our garage. Uh, tried to do the whole Bill Gates thing, start a business in the garage, of see what course. happens. Of course. Uh, we finally got to the point where uh, it was big enough that my wife here said it either goes away or becomes something serious because it was kind of absorbing our entire life at home, uh, which was true. So we decided to buy a piece of property out in Westport and go big with it. And, and, and it's been a fun adventure ever since. Are there some things you've learned about the winemaking business that you didn't didn't know before? Uh, every single day. Uh, <laughs> it's and that's one of the fun things about this industry is, as a winemaker, you can go to any winery anywhere in the country and really walk in, introduce yourself. We have people that come in and say, "Hey, I'm in the industry," and start talking about things. I mean, every, it doesn't matter what size. I, I walked into my first year doing this. I walked into Chateau Saint Michel. Um, ended up being able to talk to the winemaker and spent the entire day there and learning from other people's mistakes, other people's successes, uh, learning how they're doing processes, learning what to stay away from. And those are things that are nice about this industry is it isn't a, this is what I'm doing, stay away. It's come in, enjoy, let's have a glass of wine, let's talk. So you operate the tasting bar, is that right? Usually, yes. I, I stay behind the bar. My husband makes the wine and I sell and, it. And you <laughs> sell it. We, we know our roles, yes. Uh, yes, I usually stay behind the bar and I am mostly the one that um, talks to customers about our wine. Oh. And we try to, um, we try to tell customers that a, a wine is a very personal thing. It's all about your palate. Whether you like red wine or white wine, it doesn't matter. And the biggest thing is when you go to a winery mm -hmm. is to try something new. Don't be afraid to go try a variety that you've never heard of because you never know, you might like it. Or one of the things we experience with customers, they come in and say, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. Simply drink it. Uh, they come in thinking that there's a certain way, especially as a new wine drinker, they come in not knowing, they think there's a special way you have to do it. We just want people to be relaxed, enjoy, and just try something new, like, like Maria said. Is there anything that you wish more people knew about wine that, that is good? I, I see more often than not that people don't differentiate the wine for sipping and the wine for drinking. Oh. That's why when you go and taste wine, you need to kind of have an idea. Am I trying to find wine? and I want to have it just to open a bottle with uh, a charcuterie board or crackers and nuts, or am I gonna have a, a pretty heavy steak with a lot of seasonings and herbs and I'm gonna pair it with a wine that's not gonna get lost in the food. Your menu is extensive. You have such a great selection of different things from salads to sandwiches and kids and steaks and pizzas and everything. Are there some favorite pairings that you have with your wines and your menu? Yeah, our heavy pasta dishes or like our bone and ribeye, I uh, like to pair with like our Barbera, you know, a nice oh. heavier. Uh, but then also some things people don't understand is if you're eating something spicy, you want to drink something a little more on the sweet side because it, it takes that burn away. We try and be a little bit different where it's, we're not trying to push the, here's what the industry says you need to do. We're more relaxed. If you enjoy something, eat what you enjoy, drink what you enjoy, pair what you enjoy. But we'll make suggestions. So let me ask you a couple questions that came to mind as you were talking. Do you have a cranberry wine? We have a cranberry and a cranberry cinnamon. Really? And are those a sweeter or a drier style of wine? They're sweeter, but they're not overly sweet. They're pretty well balanced. Uh, with it being a tart fruit, you want to have that balance to where you're not just getting that heavy tartness. So there is a little bit of sweet, or not overwhelming, but not yeah. underwhelming. We have our Riesling, which is yeah. more on the sweeter side. Okay. Um, the Vignet is a little bit sweeter too, but it's oaky because we, we do our wines in stainless steel and oak. And, oh, and that okay. changes. So. Um, when somebody comes and does a wine tasting, the person that's behind the wine tasting bar, 
ask those questions, what do you usually people like, so we know what to recommend. But at the same time, we want them to try something new and get out a little bit out of the box because 99% of the time they're pleasantly surprised. And that's yeah. what blind tasting is all about, to discover something new. That's one of the fun things about the cranberries. We get people come in and say there's a group of three or four and you get people to say, I don't drink wine. We give them a sample of it and all of a sudden they love it. So that adventurous quality that you were describing, uh, you can bring that to wine and let your palate develop the more wine you taste. Correct. And you have, again, more than 15, you have 16 different varieties of wine. So a wine lover that likes red wine could find something light and easy and fruity, mm -hmm. as well as bigger and bolder and tannic and hearty and ready yeah. for that steak. Yes. A full range of those things. So I'll ask a couple questions. What's your favorite part about being a winemaker? What do you love about it? My favorite part, other than, and I just enjoy making wine, but my favorite part is seeing the people when they're enjoying it and talking mm -hmm. to people who are enjoying it. Okay. It's the same reason why we got into the food side of it. Okay. The entire, I mean, owning our own business, owning a restaurant, it's nonstop work and it's not exactly the dream thing to do, but for us, we love it because we get to interact with customers. We get to see the look on their face when they're enjoying that wine, when they're enjoying that food. We have customers that drive four hours to come have dinner with us. It's because we don't rush anybody. They come in, they sit down, they enjoy, they relax. We have customers that stay here for two, three hours, just enjoying the day, enjoying some wine yeah. with friends. And with us having the big community tables, larger tables, we get a couple that'll come sit down and a couple come sit down next to them and they don't know. Next thing you know, they're off enjoying life. It's, it's that European that we try and bring into it. How does food and wine link up for you? How do you like to put them together? Well, of course, we do certain dishes that have a Bulgarian fare to it. Uh, for example, we use Bulgarian feta cheese oh. on some of the, our dishes, and um, majority of the people love it. It's, it has a very unique taste, and uh, with some of my suggestions, a little bit of guidance, Chris has made dishes <laughs> that they pair very well also with our wine. <laughs> of course. What's the best thing you'd like to tell people about why they would choose Cranberry Road Restaurant? We do winery. everything fresh. So we make everything from scratch. We do everything to order. We get our, we know where our seafood comes from. We get all of our seafood from Westport, Washington. We know the fishermen that's, that's catching the fish. Uh, we make sure everything we prep day by day. So what you're buying is you're buying quality rather than just buying something that we are unpackaging frozen, throwing in a microwave, throwing in a deep fryer. We don't even have deep fryers in, in our kitchen. So right. um, fresh is tremendous. the key. You've been in business for 13 years. This is your first year in Coeur d'Alene and you are one of the only winery restaurants that I'm aware of in this part of the world. That's a lot of things all at once. Uh, so it's been really nice to sit with you and chat. Is there anything else you'd like to make sure we get to tell people about Cranberry Road as we go out in the world? I, what I would like to add is just come as you are and give us a try. We're yeah. family friendly and like my husband said, we're not in the business of turning tables. We want you to come, enjoy our food, enjoy our wine, and have the service that goes with it and, and make it an experience. So when you have company coming over from out of town, out of town, you would think about us to come and um, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the food, and enjoy the wine. That's tremendous. Well, you've certainly built a great place here in Riverstone and Coeur d'Alene and it looks like you have many years of success ahead of you. Well, cheers. You're here. From meme to myth, Travis Chapman creates mind-bending artwork that not only tickles your funny bone, 
but may also deliver a contemplative message. I painted all different kinds of subjects because I wanted to, I never got, I mean, I, I painted landscapes for a while, I painted everything for a while, but I decided to duplicate a Rembrandt after I saw the uh, documentary on Netflix about that exact Rembrandt that was stolen out of a museum. And uh, it was, the original image I saw was just, just really hit me. And I thought it was one of the coolest paintings I'd ever seen. I've painted several paintings of Spokane related uh, landmarks and uh, scenery. Um, it is a beautiful place. I've painted um, basically coming back to Spokane from I-90 and the feeling that you're home that I really liked a lot. It's kind of just coming down the hill and you see Spokane and it just lets you know you're home. And so I, I like that one. When I start painting any subject, it always gives me other ideas. Um, for instance, like this Darth Vader I'm painting, with his mask off, it looks like he's playing one of those harmonicas that is like hooked to your face like Bob Dylan would have, so you can play guitar with both hands. Eventually, I got to painting the most random items, and I think that helped me because it teaches you how to paint different things um, because it's a lot different to paint a face than a landscape or even a, a vehicle or a, a droid. <laughs> Sharks, I mean, skies. When I start painting a subject, it just leads to more and more like a snowball effect. And I, I think of more ideas. I think of, I go way down the rabbit hole when I make a new painting or when I make any painting, so many people s see it while they're on social media. So you're just doing this and it, it will just fly by if you don't have something that will catch their attention. So it's either something nostalgic, which I like anyway, uh, I like nostalgia, and it's something that they recognize and want to see, you know, I like Jaws or I like Star Wars and it's a twist on it you can see that just you know in an instant and then you will stop and take a look at it and that's the difficulty of social media art is just not getting scrolled right past. I remember the first thing I sold which was a print of a it's called the 80s cocktail party and it has a bunch of different 80s characters and uh, they're all drinking and having in a having a cockfight gambling around a circular table but I'll never forget it because it was the first time I sold any art and it was an awesome feeling. Travis is showing his works at the newly renovated Shotgun Studios in Peaceful Valley, Spokane, Washington where he's joined by many like-minded artists. Mr. Miyagi doesn't lie, and so when he tells Daniel that the crane technique is undefensible, you cannot defend it, uh, I just assumed that meant to other things as well, uh, against shark attacks, bear attacks, anything. Taking inspiration from the wacky world of Gary Larson and the Far Side has led Travis Chapman to develop his unique style. I love the Far Side, and when I uh, was growing up, I would read it constantly in school and whatever. But he would, he was so ridiculous that uh, cows would talk, just all, all different things. But he would get his point across in one picture, one frame, and tell an entire story that uh, just, I would just laugh. I loved it. 
Travis has found success in the world of social media with over 80,000 followers on Instagram, as well as an engaged audience at Reddit and other social platforms. I have shipped items, different prints and paintings to Taiwan, Australia, Europe a lot. Germany buys a lot of memes for some reason. Um, all over the United States, it's really awesome. I'm on a Star Wars kick again. I'm working on an Obi-Wan meeting R2-D2. This is, this is probably inside baseball, but uh, in the movie, uh, Obi-Wan doesn't recognize R2-D2, even though they made all the prequels and they were like, he was like saved his life before. So somehow he didn't remember that he ever owned a droid. I'm drawing the piece where he hugs him like he's seen re reunited with him. Uh, and it reminds me of a kind of a um, religious piece a little bit because Obi-Wan's wearing you know, this robe and stuff, and it's like a painting of Jesus or something where, you know, he's like hugging someone or something. It, it reminds me, I was looking at those for inspiration too, to get a nice, like a warm feeling. My signature painting is probably the Bob Ross. That's what I use on my, all my social media uh, profiles. Uh, drinking buddies with Jaws and Quint pouring a beer in the shark's mouth. That's a big one. The Bigfoot saving baby forest babies. That's another popular, that's gotten the most, um, you know, in online attention. That's our show for today. Join us again as we go on more great adventures from the pages of Art Chowder Magazine and we share Everyday Northwest. Learn more about the sights, sounds, beats, and treats of life in the Pacific Northwest through Art Chowder Magazine. Subscriptions and more information are available at www.artchowder.com. Financial support for Everyday Northwest provided in part by BECU. People Helping People, www.becu.org. Also, Historic Flight Foundation at Feltz Field in Spokane. Experience History in Motion, www.historicflight.org. And also, the Art Spirit Gallery in downtown Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Celebrating 25 years of quality, imaginative, and inspiring art. TheArtSpiritGallery.com